What's going on, everybody? Welcome to another episode of Super Power Review, the show that brings you news and reviews on comic book related things. Today, we're going to be talking about the Grim Knight Batman, uh, the number one hit uh, book that came out about two weeks ago. And uh, to help me talk about this subject, I got my buddy, <laughs> Jay Brunel. Okay. <laughs> Ruining my hair. So, anywho, we're going to be talking about the Grim Knight Batman book that came out a couple of weeks ago. Jake, uh, what did you uh, think about this book? I love the darkness to it. It was just consistent with the metal, it carried over really well. Yeah. It's fun. We got Batman Punisher in this. Yeah. Pretty much. I, I was a little worried about it just because I didn't want another Punisher book. I didn't, I didn't want another Punisher to be involved. But they kind of made the transition really well. I feel like he's worse than Punisher. Worse than the Punisher? Yeah, pretty his mentality. Much, yeah. I feel like his mentality is just like over the top. I really like this Batman because this Batman does not give any place bad word here. <laughs> <laughs> um, he, he, he will do anything and everything he can uh, to pretty much uh, eliminate any bad guy. Um, you know, he's got pretty much Gotham rigged to his, to his hand. He can pretty much kill anybody and anybody that he really wants to. Um, I think it's pretty cool that in this uh, book, too, that we learned that uh, he didn't deal with any villains like the Joker because he said something like, oh, I remember like killing off a guy in a red hood, but I didn't have to deal with a Joker. So this Grim Knight Batman is pretty much what Batman could be if Batman did kill or yeah. uh, if Batman didn't go by his morals. Had no rules, yeah. yeah. I feel like this Batman pretty much has a Thanos mentality. He would easily kill half this race to save the world. He really would. So we get we get an origin story, which is really cool. Um, mm -hmm. I really loved uh, the artwork by uh, Risso. Um, I think his first name is Arthur Risso, but Risso. I love the the different transitioning from Jock artwork to Risso artwork. Mm -hmm. So like origin story is Risso, and then you know present day is Jock. So I really I really liked both uh, pieces of artwork, but I really loved surprisingly the usage of Batman Year One in this book. Now yep. now normally I wouldn't really like stuff like this because I feel like comic books use too much of the same thing over and over again, the same stories that we know. Mm -hmm. And like, how many times have you seen the Batman origin story of his parents getting killed? Millions, yep. millions of times. But I really enjoyed the usage of Batman year one. I like how different it becomes. Because only there's, one, there's only one difference in this origin story than the average origin story from Batman, you know? Where, you know, he becomes the victim. At this point, Batman, Bruce Wayne, as a kid, never chooses to play the victim and kind of spoiler alert kills his assailant that kills his parents so and he just doesn't allow himself to be taken advantage of right. where you know so i really like that aspect yeah me too i mean i that that artwork was really cool and like i said bringing it back to year one but uh you know having him shoot the bat when the bat comes crashing into the window i thought that was really cool um, but I really liked this artwork. I thought it was well played and like I said normally I don't really like the whole flashback and you know the constant usage of other stories mm -hmm. and Because like okay, we already seen this we already played this um, And this That's was really amazing. cool. Like this was a really cool page of year one where he goes to pretty much um, Tell like uh, the corrupted officials like hey listen. I think you've uh, had enough uh, or taken away plenty of Gotham's fortunes and at the end he ends up just killing everyone in the room instead of just warning them like the regular Batman that we know from our world. Threaten them, scare them, whatever. Yeah. Yep. Um, so really cool and then so you know the main villain, the main Grim Knight villain ends up becoming Commissioner Gordon which I thought was pretty different not not to be expected in, in my opinion. But really who's the villain? Is it really Jim Gordon or is it Batman? Well, it's you're Rain. right, you're right. It is Batman, but Jim Gordon is trying to be the hero. What I do like is the fact that Batman becoming the Grim Knight Batman has changed the aspect of everybody's morality, I guess. I Jim, guess. Jim Gordon has become more gritty, more um, by the book, I guess. Uh, well, he's then, always been about the book. Yeah, always but I mean, book. like, you know, you think of regular Batman, he's allowed... Vigilantes to run rampant Batman, for example, 
But, you know, when Batman kind of goes a little too far, Jim Gordon's really ready to slap the book down on him. Right. So, I mean, it's kind of... It, his only choice affected the entire universe. It just doesn't affect his story. Because, um, I mean, Two-Face is still in there. But I'd like to know how Two-Face becomes Two-Face. That was cool, if, yeah. You know, like, he becomes Two-Face. Like, I, I feel like because Batman was very forgiving as a... With his rule that allows Two-Face to become Two-Face. Yeah. Why does he still have the scar here? I don't know. And I'm curious on how that affected his... Like his play, that'd be a cool story to see, on how like Two Face still stays a good guy. True, that 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 would be pretty cool. So maybe if they do Grim Knight Batman for future stuff, maybe we could get kind of like a prequel on why. Yeah, that would be fantastic. That would be fantastic. I think DC would be silly not to c continue to use the Batman who laughs, or maybe even the Grim Knight Batman. Um, so pretty much like a little brief. Uh, re you know, history of the book. If you haven't read it yet, you know, there's still some surprises if you want to read it. Uh, we don't want to get too crazy into the book because, you know, obviously for people who haven't read it yet, there's still some surprises. And for the people who already read it, then you're like, uh, yeah, I already know, Kevin. You're not telling me anything new. <laughs> um, so what do you think? Um, let's give it a grade first. And then I'm, let's play around with some ideas of what we could be expecting from this book. Uh, Batman Who Laughs storyline. So what would you give this book using a CGC grade? I'd say like a hard 9.4. 9.4. And yeah. why, why, why the 9.4? Uh, I think the artwork was great. The story was telling was great. I feel like the transitions were very mixed. It was very, uh, there's two realms happening where there's a Grim Knight Batman and there's your everyday Batman. Um, and there's a commission Gordon, Commissioner Gordon to go with each one of them. The thing is... In Grim Knight uh, Gordon, he's the more gritty, more recluse version. And then you have the regular Batman Jim Gordon, who's a victim. And Grim Knight transfers over to regular Batman's realm and kind of takes advantage of that softness of Gordon. Yeah. So now that you know that, they flip between the Gordons a lot in the story to try to tell the story of how the Grim Knight developed his disdain for the cops and he takes it over to regular Batman. And it was just very hard to see that transition happening because they did it so frequent that I couldn't tell sometimes which Gordon, which Gordon we were talking about. Okay. So it was, you know, bagged and gagged Gordon. Yeah. And then, you know, maybe they would do, they would jump back to the past of another Gordon where it could have easily been the past of the bagged and gag, uh, gagged Gordon. Mm. So I'm not sure. I mean, like, so, but at the, if, once you get to the end and you kind of like the last few pages and you read it and you're like, it all makes sense. It all comes together. Don't get me wrong. I love the fact that it eventually comes together. But if they was going to kind of like tell the story of the Gordons, it would have been a lot better if there was some kind of way to delineate the two from each other. And I think that was my biggest problem hmm. is just like the, the fluidity of... Um, the story. Interesting. Well, if I were to give this book a grade, I, I'm I'm gonna put it a high up there. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. I'm gonna I'm gonna give this book a nine point eight. Eight. Really? Yeah. I really do because you know what? Uh, I when I read this book, it's been a long time since a newer book got me so excited and like really thinking about like oh man and I really like this or oh, I really like that part and this part was cool. This book got me so happy and so excited after I read it, and I read this book maybe four times. Yeah? Yeah, I really enjoyed this book, and I was not expecting to enjoy this book so much. I was just like, I was excited for the book, mm -hmm. and be like, oh, yeah, cool, Grim Knight comes out this week, I'll go pick that up, I'll read it. And then Whatever. when I read it, I was like, wow. I was kind of blown away. I was like, that was a really cool origin story. I think that was a cooler origin story than maybe even the Batman Who Laughs. Yeah, I, well, I mean, yeah. I mean, but you got to think about it. This also ties into the Batman Who Laughs. This is supposed to be in between number three and four. If you look at the back of the book um, when you're done reading it, it says continued on Grim Knight 3, 4, Grim Knight mm. 4. Um, so I always really like that the fact that they're tying in all these stories where it's not like, you know, six books and that's a story and then six books, that's a story. Um, if you look at the Metal series, it's a continuation of 26 books. Yeah. And they all mesh in at certain points 
Um, it's not just a, a mini series as much as they advertise it. It's literally half. If you had a book for every week, it's half a year's worth of books. Mm. You know. No, but a absolutely a great read. You know, if you're not reading this storyline, uh, you're really missing out because um, this this story is getting me really excited. Uh, the Batman Who Laughs. It's a really cool series. Uh, really enjoying it. I really have no complaints about it. Um, I just there, there are some things where like you know I I, I kind of want to um, the whole like okay here's another Batman from the universe mm -hmm. thing okay like I think that's gonna start getting played out if they keep doing that. But okay, let's get into some predictions about maybe what's gonna happen in this book. And uh, if you don't mind, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna tell you mine and see what you think. Um, I think because there, we have really no reason yet why the Grim Knight is tagging along with the Batman who laughs. And uh, we know that ba our Batman is, mm -hmm. uh, you know, is taking serums to kind of wean off as long as he can the, the Joker toxin. I think that the Batman who laughs, uh, the Grim Knight Batman, excuse me, is going to be the hero of the, of the story. I do too, but it's not going to feel like it. Yes. I feel like yes. it is, um, <laughs> he's playing the Batman who laughs. He's playing him for a fool. At the end of the day, um, the Grim Knight is going to get what he wants. But it's not going to seem like a victory for the good. It's I, just going to be a victory for him. I it's agree. not going to be a victory for the I Batman agree. who laughs or the good side. I agree. So that's where I think that might play out. Cause, I, I agree. Mean, and I think maybe he'll even have to take on not just the Batman who laughs. He might double cross the Batman who laughs. But I also think that he's going to have to take down our Batman. I think they're gonna have to, he's going to have to take down some Justice League. If they're going to do some tie-ins like they always do, he's going to have some run-ins with some of the good guys. Because he's mm. going to have to like play for the Batman who laughs. Yeah. Who everybody knows is a bad guy. Yeah. You, you know, and he's going to have to fight for him. And I feel like that could be a possible, you know, um, what's, it, what's it called? The Bad Justice League. You know, he's going to have to play that game where, yeah. you know, like I have to take down an entire team. Yeah, like, right. I would love to see that. That'd be really cool. That would be really cool. Any, and see how he does it differently than Batman regular, because Batman always tries to incapacitate him. Yeah. Batman who Grim Knight is going to straight up kill him. Right. He doesn't care. He, he could do the job himself. Yeah. I don't think I, to, I don't think our Batman is is going to find a way out of this. To be quite honest, I think Batman has. Oh, he's met, screwed. Yeah, I think he's way. I think Batman has finally met a task that is way over his head that he can't deal with. And um, I, th I think our Batman that we know is going to be kind of like gone. And maybe the Grim Knight will stay in this world and kind of take over this Gotham. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like, hey, guys, like, I saved you, Gotham. You know, you're not going to be like these crazy, like, Gothamites who laugh kind of people. But you're going to play into my book, and I'm going to pretty much own Gotham like he did in his world. I wouldn't be surprised if Grim Knight bounces from realm to realm f fixing him. Because if you look at it, his world doesn't have a problem. Right. As long <laughs> as he's it. not there, there's, there's no, no problem. You, exactly. So I wouldn't be surprised if he goes from realm to realm, like, you know, playing, you know, uh, bar rescue. Like, Interesting. So Interesting. Any other predictions? I see a lot of characters dying, like a Game of Thrones kind of feel. Like, you're like, really? They're killing them off? And, like, you know. I don't, I don't foresee people sticking around. It's possible. It's like, possible. The only two people I feel like you're going to see consistently stay around is Grim Knight and Batman Who Laughs. Scott Snyder is having one hell of a time writing this book. Oh, well, we're having one hell of a time reading it. So, yeah, I mean, we are. We really are. You write them, we'll read them. <laughs> <laughs> well, guys, I think that's going to do it for this episode. I hope you really enjoyed it. If you liked anything that Jake and I had to say, then uh, make sure you smash that like button. And if you want to see more from the channel, be sure to subscribe. And uh, comment, any feedback, uh, that would be super helpful. Remember, a little love can go a long way. So that's going to do it for today. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next video.